Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Liam Moore. I'm from the Munster Technological University in Cork in Ireland. And in this training unit, we're going to look at data packet formats and we're going to specifically look at the JSON data packet format. This um, training unit is brought to you under the Remain project, which is an Erasmus Plus um, funded project, uh, co-funded by the European Union. So again, just a quick breakdown of what we're going to cover within um, this uh, training unit five. And we're focusing on JSON structures uh, today. So what we want to do is understand what JSON is and what role it has in factory communication systems and MQTT. So one of the requirements, as we saw in the previous presentation for data exchange to happen, is that data is presented in a standardized manner. That is that both the sender and receiver are ensured to be speaking the same language and can understand each other. In computer-based systems, data is typically serialized, and then transfer, transferred in a pre-existing format. So transferred byte by byte down the line, either wire, wireless, in a format that is pre-created and understood by both the sender and receiver. There's several formats have been created over the years that have been trying to standardize data transfer. Back in the 70s, you had standard generalized markup language, SGML, and it was the first successful approach to creating structure around data, and it was used primarily for specifying a document markup or set of tags. After that, you had other attempts, but one of the ones that people might be more familiar with, especially if you work on uh, production equipment, a lot of them can be configured using extensible markup language, otherwise known as XML. And this is a subset of SGML and was focused on transferring data and text between hardware and operating systems with little to no human interaction, incorporating a wide set of rules and restrictions on how the data is structured. But XML is a relatively complex approach uh, and as a result, while suitable for general internet data transfer, it is not very effective for white lightweight data communications like that, which is typically used in Internet of Things applications and protocols such as MQTT. Sample XML data is shown here uh, for a CNC machine. Um, so what's that leave us with? Well, the presentation is called Data Packet Formats JSON. So unsurprisingly, JSON is the data packet format that is proposed for use with MQTT. It stands for JavaScript Object Notation. And much like XML, JSON is a format for serializing, transporting, and storing data. Unlike XML, it is more lightweight and appears as a human readable text. There's two data structures, both objects and arrays. The object is sets of names, value pairs, and an array is a list of values. The values can be string, number, object, array, boolean, and null. Here's an example JSON data packet from a CNC machine. So you have the CNC make, mazak, and that's an object name, CNC make, value, string, mazak. You have uh, the uptime of the machine itself. So object name, uptime, value is a number, it's 18. And then you have an array called run data, consists of objects, names, RPM, and run zero with values in the numbers, and you can see the numbers there. So without much in terms of uh, being able to understand binary or specialized computer codes, this is readable by humans, and you can probably, especially if you know CNC machines, make some sense of what the data is going to be in. Here's a comparison uh, for similar data between JSON and XML. And you can see the JSON comes in much um, lighter uh, by about nearly 33, over 33% lighter than the XML equivalent. Now, JSON gives you a mode of um, serializing and transporting that data. It doesn't offer you the structure, the CNC make, the serial number, the uptime, the location, the plant, all these things were defined by someone or some other standard and put into the JSON format. So this is only solving one issue in regards to interoperability. There is still other standards or structures that need to be used to um, make logical sense of the data, but this is the first step for that. 
Again, this project is um, the Remain project, funded under Erasmus Plus, and you can see the partners and their locations um, throughout Europe on the map up below.